What's going on guys? So we are still at the Riverstone factory in Topeka, Indiana. Got a bunch of Riverstones here. All of these are gonna have full body paint on them. They are getting prepped for it. That's why you see it in this beautiful gray color. That said, go back and check out the videos we've been making out here. There's so much great content on why Riverstones are special and it speaks to the whole point of why I always talk about Riverstones. Even though I've never owned one, they've never sponsored me, they've never paid for a flight, a hotel, dinner, nothing. I mean, this right here, this isn't even them paying me. I happened to be in Indiana and I was like, you know what, I am gonna carve out an evening, which what time is it right now? It's 7.15 in the evening, so we could come out here and film this. And my good friend Nick was uh, was very, very kind to uh, let me see this factory when everyone was gone. But today's video, we're going to talk about a finished product. But before that, we're going to talk about something that's relatively new for Riverstone. Hang tight. I'll be right back. So, All right, Nick, what do we got going on here? So dovetail drawers. So we are using, it is a rubber wood, but it's a solid wood. It's not a plywood dovetail drawer. You know, one funny thing is one of our sales guys was asking me, he said, Nick, you think that's too thin on the backside of the dovetail? I said, well, I don't know. Let's see. How strong is it? You know what? I think it's going to be good. I think it'll hold together. <laughs> it's taking a trim 215. <laughs> <laughs> but check it out. Look, dovetail on everything now. This is standard or is this optional? Standard dovetail. This is what we talked about earlier, where it just makes sense to do it across the entire line and not just, you know, pick and choose certain models. So those are the uh, drawers ready for the next day of production. Very, very cool. And that is a not so insignificant upgrade. A lot of people, a lot of people. How many Riverstone owners probably say, hey, you guys should do dovetail? What we get a lot of is, honestly, at this price point, why aren't you doing dovetail? Like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I don't see a lot of actual drawer failures, but it's a question that comes up enough. Um, we decided to make the jump and go to a dovetail. I mean, the dovetail, ultimately, it's going to be a better drawer. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't needed, but it's definitely an upgrade. Yes. And at some point every year, you're looking at what you can upgrade. And this year, it's something we've talked about a couple years. We thought it was worth upgrade. You know one thing, even like our chairs. So these are regular dinette chairs. They're a nice wood chair. We got the nice aesthetic curved legs. That's a chair that's made in another town, LaGrange, about 30 minutes from here. Okay. So it's not an imported chair. It's made down the road. Okay. So a lot of the items we use are that way. This is one of those industries that, in reality, a lot of the components you use are manufactured in the U.S. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that goes into RVs are manufactured here in the U.S. Wow, this is beautiful. So this is a completed unit, full body paint and all. So I'm guessing when a unit like this leaves, it goes to the paint booth yes. and then they bring it back here whenever they're done and then you guys do the final prep for it, I suppose? Yeah, I guess, let me show you. So they're gonna go, we're getting ready for inventory. We pulled this unit in. Um, it's a unit from a dealer. They needed to add an option to it and we told them to bring it back to the factory and we'd add it for them. Um, so normally that would be another non, paint unit sitting there getting ready to go out the door. Okay. Once they go out there, they're gonna go to our paint shop. Um, we you actually use a Coachman's paint shop for most of our paint. They do a really good job for us. Um, for their class A's. Yeah. yeah, so Coachman has a paint shop on facility. They do their class A, some of their class C's. There are different levels of paint you can get within there. We pay for a double cut and buff. Um, it's a 4X clear coat on it. So they do two rounds of clear coat. Each time they're clear coating it, they do Two layers. Yep. And you, you made a point here. You said we pay. And a lot of people don't realize that just because it's all under the Forest River umbrella, that if they choose to do this, they have to, but Riverstone has to budget it in mm -hmm. to pay another division of Forest River to actually mm -hmm. paint it. So it's not one of those things to where it's like, oh, well, because it's Coachman and we're all under one umbrella, that it's just done complimentary. You have to, they invoice mm -hmm. you for it. You have to pay for that. And it's treated that way because you they need to know that if you're gonna have that added, that you get to pick how you want that done. Yeah, 100%. So they're ran as an independent division. Um, even within Coachman, they're ran as an independent division. They, they are ran as a paint shop. So when we go and choose who we're gonna use for paint, we're not pushed towards them. It's a choice. We've tried a number of paint shops in the area and they've done as good a job as anyone for us, if not better than the majority of the guys. That's great. Um, 
And this one doesn't have the fiberglass cap because it has the large pullout drawer. This is the only floor plan yes. I think you have now that does. Uh, there's a couple floor plans, okay. but yeah, anywhere we've added that big pullout drawer, um, we're not doing the rear fiberglass cap. So when you lift this up, there's going to be a monster more I'd pull out in there. I loved this drawer. When I had the beacon for a while, boy, this is so nice whenever you have mountain bikes or you have anything. I love loading this up for a trip without having to go into your RV, in and out, in and out, in and out. You just hit the road a lot quicker. It is such a convenient feature to have. So this unit is not completed on the outside yet. So it is fresh back. After we get them back from paint, um, we line them up outside, pull them into this bay one by one. On the walls here, we have special lights. So they're not on right now. But well, these lights mimic the sun. Oh, wow. So you can set it to morning sun, mid-afternoon sun, evening sun to see the paint under different sun conditions, as well as some bonus big, bright LEDs up top. And then we have hand lights that do the same thing as far as the sun goes. And there's a lot of all of our uh, safety cabinets over here, but full of paints. And then we have all of our buffing compounds. This is where our guys inspect the paint. If they need to do minor touch-up, they'll do it here. Very rarely do we have to send a unit back, but if we find major flaws, we will send it back to the paint shop before we finish it to ship. Once it's been inspected, anything else has been rebuffed or touched up in this area, just like the production, rest of the production facility, this area is staffed to do four units a day. They go outside, they get in line to come in these other doors where we're gonna see a more complete unit. And this is where we're gonna install awnings, some of the exterior vent covers. These units are pulled in here um, they are, they do have the awnings, the slide toppers, the vent covers on them. I'm assuming they were missing a cabinet door, something minor, maybe a piece of furniture. And now they're pulled back in to complete those shortages. So that's what this side of the buildings used all these bays for the final completion and then final clean and inspection. But they're inspected as they go down the line. And we also sent them out to a PDI facility that Forest River has where every division sends units to. We also send them to a CAI division that's just down the street. We send a unit every week, and that division is really focused on the customer experience, fit and finish, going over the paint, looking for a uh, continual error with whether it's an appliance we use, a radio someone uses, um, and we sit, we have a monthly meeting with our production, some people from our production team, our production manager, the CAI division leaders as well and go over what they've been seeing with their product, um, how we can improve it. And a lot of it for us is getting, um, you know, probably not the best word to use, but nitpicky on some of the final finish stuff, which is what we want. Uh, but a lot of times we don't have a continuous electrical component that's causing them an issue. So there's not an easy, mm -hmm. hey, if you change this, it's gonna increase the customer experience. That's what that whole division is focused on. It's coming in going, hey, we've noticed that around this corner your crown molding could be a little cleaner we've noticed that right. on the last couple we've had um those type items and we sit there as a team and go how do we change that how do we make that better sometimes it's something as small as that sometimes it's a little bigger and we may change a floor plan because of it usually yeah. something minor on a floor plan but we're always again always trying to improve the product yep and we're not going to do any any interior tours first of all all the slide outs are in well some of them are in on some of these units um because i've filmed i think every unit you guys have in some video yeah. in the past they don't have any new floor plans right now but they will probably have some soon and whenever they have new floor plans of course we'll come out and see those probably at open house but the key behind this series of videos was to understand what they do differently now i'm going to ask nick a question that's going to be a little diff difficult to answer. He has no idea I'm asking him this question, but it's going to be one that's kind of generated directly from the viewers of my channel. And it is that RV manufacturers, first of all, I think that sometimes people don't understand that there's a big difference between Forest River and Forest River Riverstone and Forest River and Forest River Coachman and all the different brands that fall under the umbrella of Forest River. I had a really, really great lesson in this when I was working with Coachman, and they didn't really have Forest River chiming in on anything. There was no Forest River coming in and saying, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. It was them running their own division, doing it the way they wanted to do it, understanding that you still have to be profitable, you still have to have a focus on on reality, on are the dealerships going to buy it? Because as, as hard as it is to say this, I'm going to say it, the dealership is the people that have to buy it from you. And then they're set up to sell it to a consumer. So they buy from you what they think they can sell to a consumer. Correct. So the, the biggest thing is you have to be 
on a dealership in order for people to see the product. You can build the best product in the world, but if you're not in front of your customers, if you're not in front of the end consumer, no one's gonna buy it. Um, so we have to build a product that fits a need for a dealer, right? So you go into a dealership, a dealership doesn't wanna stock 15 pieces in the same price category. They want something for every buyer, from your first time entry level buyer to that customer that's buying their retirement, last fifth wheel they're buying, motorhomes, everything in between. Um, so you want to fit that segment. You want to be at a segment the dealers ultimately think they can sell because they have to sell it and make money. Yep. You can't know, just sit on their lot forever. Everyone has to, yep. right? No matter what you want to do, how well you want to take care of the consumer, that doesn't work if you're not making money to keep the doors open. Um, <clears throat> what we try to do, and you're, you're right, Forest River gives us the freedom to make our choices on what we do, what we use. The only time they really have oversight is when it comes to customer safety. Um, we were just talking about today. It's life, fire, safety, basically. So when you're talking about running gears, axles, wheels, tires, it has to be someone who's reputable, somebody that has done the testing. The product has to be certified. Um, propane, you know, there's all the RVI co RVIA codes. But then on top of that, if we're using a lithium battery, it, wants, it has to go through our corporate stand, uh, mm -hmm. compliance and testing facility. Um, so when it comes to true safety items, there is a little oversight, but they don't say you have to use this brand. They say, hey, here's a dozen brands that have been approved. Here's a dozen products that have been approved. Um, and if we take them something that's not on that list, they'll put it in their testing facility. And if it passes, it passes. There's not a, you can't use it yeah. unless they believe there's a safety issue with it. But when it comes to who we're buying furniture from, who we're buying axles, tires, wheels, TVs, windows, any of those items from, um, there's not a corporate standard that you have to go to this direction. Mm -hmm. So they allow us to a lot of flexibility, um, which allows us to build a great product for the customer. Yep. You know, yep. we get to be in our little Riverstone world and be a part of the bigger Forest River umbrella, which is a great company that's provided us a great opportunity to build this product for customers. Yep. And I, and I think to touch off of that, and I think this is also very important to think about, whenever somebody says, you know, I'll never buy a Forest River product or Forest River's junk, they may have had a bad experience with a division or with a certain product that mm -hmm. another manufacturer made. But again, you run this so differently. And because there's not one standard that says this is what you have to do. And I realized this when I worked with Coachman, kind of the same thing. There, there was so much more flexibility than I thought. And a testimony to that is the fact that the brands that you see that make it into your facility so you can install are not the cheap no-name brands. Mm -hmm. You hear of na names like Victron and GoPower, and you don't hear of these weird names that you see on on Alibaba. You don't, or on you know okay. on Amazon that have weird off names you've never heard of. You yeah. see Samsung, you see Insignia, you see brands that have to meet a certain standard before they can make it onto an RV. And of course, you're going to see some level of failure on some of those things because of the conditions RVs are pulled under. It happens. Or because stuff fails in general. You can buy a thousand microwaves and inevitably you're going to have a certain number of them that just won't work from any manufacturer. You know, what's interesting is is if you put a Furion, a Furion refrigerator in your RV, you're going to have people that say, I don't like Furion. But then you put a Samsung in there or I put a Samsung refrigerator in my house and I made a video segment on it and I had so many comments saying this is the worst thing you could put in there. But the reality of it is, is anytime you're talking about an appliance, Samsung is not a non-reputable brand. You pay a good amount of for that over some other brands that you could put in there. A hundred percent. And they're one of the few manufacturers that uh, use a... A more efficient compressor, so with the inverter, it's going to run on less power. It stays Once mm -hmm. it's cold, that fridge stays cold on less than uh, about two amps of power an hour. Yep. So I know that, that there's so much more to it than people often think. This video is not meant to be biased to say you should pick a Forest River product. What this video is meant to do is to give you a behind-the-scenes view, because if you watch this factory tour and you watch almost any other factory tour I've done or someone else has done, you're going to see that they're not doing it the same. There are some aspects that are similar, but for the most part, they're doing things very different here than a lot of other manufacturers, and that's one of the reasons why Riverstone is honestly one of my top picks, even though I've never owned one. So it's there's a lot for me to say that, and I'm not going to say they're perfect. They're made by people. People make mistakes. 
People will never be perfect. Things can happen. People can have a bad day. A product could come in that's defective. A product could be damaged during the installation process. All of this can happen. It does happen. But I hope if you've watched all these videos, you've seen the frame. You've seen the differences there. You've seen the attachment methods. The difference is there. You've seen the sidewalls. The difference is there. The cabinets, the roof material, fiberglass, super high-end, low-profile heat pump ACs. You see the stuff, the axles, the tires, the wheels. And these are the reasons why I constantly view Riverstone as a great product. And I usually will recommend them. Everyone's personal experience may be slightly different, but I'm basing mine off of what I'm seeing and what they're doing. Final thoughts? I mean, at the end of the day, as you said, we're not perfect and we don't claim to be. Um, we try to build a great product for the customer. And when we make a mistake, we try to take care of it. And there are probably, if you dig far enough, you will find some customers that maybe we didn't take care of how we should. Um, but we make a conscious effort every day, everybody in this plant, to put a quality product out and to take care of the customers. Yeah, so we awesome. have, I think we have loyal customers and we owe it to them to do as good a job as we can here. So yeah. well, I can appreciate that. And again, this was not a scripted video. He had no idea what I was going to ask him. He actually said, what are we going to talk about? And I just said, I'm going to shoot from the hip and I'll kind of guide you in a direction of things we can focus on and look at. But aside from that, let's just, let's talk about the brand. Let's talk about what you guys are doing that's different. And I appreciate that. Oh, we appreciate you coming and doing this. Yeah, so. No problem. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please go back, check out the other videos that we've shot. I think I'm, I'm, I, I don't even know where we're at. I think this is video number six, possibly, something like that. Uh, ran out of fingers on this hand, so I'm not sure. Six or seven. Yep, so go back, check out the other videos. If you want to see what the frame looks like, the attachment method, sidewalls, ACs, roof structure, we went over all of it. We went over the nitty gritty, and um, hopefully it's uh, interesting to you, and it's something that you've been wanting to know about Riverstone and why I keep talking about them. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.